me, before I started yoga and before I even understood the word stillness, my mind was always racing. And uh, like she said, 10% of what we think barely comes to pass. All our fears, all our agitation, what if this, we stay up all night and we rig up all these movies, all these thoughts that are going to come up. And the next morning we get up and we go, oh, why did I stay up all night? It really wasn't so bad after all. Why did I get so upset about it? What am I fearing? And I thought this was the normal state of the mind. It's not. It's not the normal state of the mind. It's just that we were never taught that our mind is separate from us. You know, we were never taught in school the mind is an instrument for us. We are taught that we are our thoughts. But isn't it great in today's um, world, everybody is starting to realize this. We are living in really the best of times and the worst of times. Politics is going all over the place. People are getting very fearful, shootings everywhere, discontent everywhere. And we're living in the best of times because in these times, the knowledge to be still and to be at peace is available. It's available to us. It's never been more available than it has been now. Uh, Susan mentioned Sri Patanjali. That's the text we study on the science of the mind. You know, the mind, the human mind has not changed all these generations. All that's changed is the backdrop. But, you know, even though the backdrop today is so much prettier in the sense of we have so many more conveniences. We have dishwashers, we have washing machines, we have instant this, instant that. But are people happier? We're no happier. Our minds are still racing, wanting, needing, fighting. I'm right, you're wrong. There is no peace. So the first sutra, the second sutra, yoga is chitta vritti nirodaha, which means the restraint of the modification of the mind stuff is yoga. What does that mean? Restrain, restrain, restrain. When you, as she was trying to explain, when you have these thoughts that drive you a little crazy, for example, let's say you are a type of person who gets agitated very quickly, or you have no patience, and then these thoughts come in your mind and you're suddenly going to get angry and you blurt out something. The moment you blurt it out, what do you feel? Regret. Why did I say it? Why couldn't I wait? I know once I say it, I'm going to regret it. But still, I don't want to do it, but I can't stop myself from doing it. How many habits you want to drop? I don't want to drink anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. You want to do it. You really want to do it. You just cannot do it. Why does that happen to us? The only reason why it happens to us is because we think we are the mind. So there are certain things in our life we cannot change. But there are certain things we can change. And the only thing we can change to bring us into stillness is to understand this moment. As she mentioned, this moment in meditation. This moment. So. Sri Patanjali says, restrain of the mind stuff, vrittis, thought patterns. So you're about to get angry. You're about to lose it all. And then you suddenly go, I'm in charge of this moment. I have control of this moment. That's all I have. And at this moment, I refuse. Now this is not hard, this is not easy to do, because the first time you do it, you're gonna burn up inside. You're gonna burn up for the first five minutes, 10 minutes, but if you just hold it for that five minutes and 10 minutes, before you're gonna blurt out something you're gonna regret, and you take a walk, and you walk around the corner, and you fill your mind with thoughts like, you know, if I say this, I'm gonna regret it. Look, look, in 10 minutes, I'm gonna be peaceful. I'm gonna sleep well tonight. I'm not gonna regret it. I'm gonna be at peace. I've done what I promised myself I'm gonna do. 10 minutes later, you'll feel great about yourself. This is the stillness that we're talking about. This is the stillness we're trying to move into. 
The great saints and sages tell us the first thing you have to understand is that you are not your thoughts. You can witness your thoughts. All of us can do it. Can you watch your thought mind think? Good thoughts, bad thoughts. Everybody can do that in this room? Can you watch it? Hmm? So if you can watch it, can you change it? Anything you can watch, you can change. You've got a bad channel on TV, maybe a frightening ghost movie like my daughter and her three friends were watching the other night. I walk in, they all scream. I say, why are you making yourself miserable? <laughs> Don't watch this movie. Oh, but Granny, it's exciting. But then you scream and then you get scared. What do you want to do? Do you want to continue to get scared? Watch it. But I'm going to sleep, so I'm not going to come out and comfort you. Or change it. And if you really want to watch it, watch it tomorrow morning when it's bright daylight. But you're going to sleep bad tonight. So what did they do? They listened, thank God. <laughs> Switched it up. But next morning, they still were curious. They watched the whole thing. And then they started asking me questions about ghosts and spirits. I said, look what's happened to your mind. Look what's happened. Before you watch this movie, your mind was so peaceful and happy. Three girls staying over at Granny's house, making popcorn. Mom, you started watching the movie. What happened? Because you took that movie to be reality. So suddenly now, oh my God, the next morning they go, you know, I, yeah, this is really interesting talking about your movie. The next morning when they were asking me about ghosts and they said, you know, Gran, when you went into the room, quarter to one, we heard the door, it, the office, no, the bathroom door in the middle, open and close three times. And I go, this door? This, that's the bathroom. That's the middle toilet there. Yeah, quarter to one. And there must have been a ghost. And we were so scared. And we said, there's a ghost, but none of us dare look. Because they were sitting on the sofa, which is here. And the bathroom door is just beyond them. And I burst out laughing. I said, it wasn't a ghost. It was Les going to the toilet. <laughs> and quarter to one. And I know because I looked at my clock. <laughs> Really? I said, look what you built up in your mind. Did you see? You know, we call this misconception. <laughs> Sri Patanjali calls it misconception. But they had already built up in the mind. There was a ghost in the house. Da, 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 da. I said, rubbish, this house is full of angels. If anything, mm -hmm. it's full of good energy. So they started to laugh. And it was a really good example for me to show them, you see the state of the mind, how quickly it can go crazy. Now, if they hadn't talked to me then, they'd gone home. Any little noise in the middle of the night, what would they have thought? More ghosts? They would have been frightened, been scared. Then more imaginings, more thought patterns. And then the whole rotation of fear starts. All from what? One thought pattern that wasn't built on truth. So Sri Patanjali tells us very clearly that when you get in touch with the witness, we call it the higher self, the higher self. When you get in touch with that, you start to watch the witness more in meditation and less the thoughts that go in your mind. So as you get stronger by this practice, and you really need to get practicing to get stronger, because at the moment we're so used to doing everything from here. So we need to now let the energy come from here when we get stronger and we can watch the watcher, who is it that's watching my mind think? What is it? It's so neutral. It's neutral because it can see both sides. It just watches both sides. Then my intellect, my intellect, personal intellect, makes a decision. But if my intellect is not purified, and based in the right place. So for example, if I don't have knowledge about spirituality, I don't have knowledge about life, I don't have knowledge about good or evil, then my intellect will not be able to make a good decision in life. Correct? So we need to look after our intellect. And this is where knowledge is important. We need to educate ourselves. We really need to. Beyond what schools teach us, we need to know much more than that. 
We don't use a percentage of our brain that we're meant to use. There's so much more we can do with this brain. There's so much we can do with these thoughts. Thoughts are our instrument. It's given to us in order to enjoy the world because it, the creator, the creator, whatever created us, there has to be a creator. You have to ask yourself a simple question. Who designed this body? You need a human being to design a computer even, and put all the different parts in it. Really, our body is the best computer of all. There has to be a design, designer. It's not chaotic that we're put together the way we are with the liver, with the kidney, with the digestive system, in, out, we're just a machine. <laughs> so who lives in this machine? Who possesses this machine? Now the yogis say we are spirit, we are spirit. But when we become individualized in the body, we are individual souls. The whole study of the yoga science is that you can be free while living this earthly life and find some peace in the disharmony, in the pain, find some stillness. How do you find this stillness? By learning to keep the mind a little quiet. Keep it a little quiet. Now, there are many ways we can move into stillness. And this is the whole yoga science. The first yoga science is learn to keep your mind truthful and peaceful. So in order to be truthful or peaceful, how, mu how must you live? How must you live? When you cause harm to anybody, how do you feel? When you cause harm to yourself, how do you feel? When you lie and say an untruth, how do you feel? When you're jealous, how do you feel? When you're arrogant, how do you feel? Not comfortable, all of the above. When you love, when you serve somebody in need, when you're kind, when you're generous, how do you feel? It's logic, simple logic. When we do all those things in our life, we feel good about ourselves. And there is a sense of peace. There is a sense of peace. And this is why all the masters say, love, serve, serve, serve. Live to love, love to serve. Why, when you're serving, we call it karma yoga. And expect nothing in return. <laughs> Did you hear that? Expect nothing in return. Large words. <laughs> and you just give for the sake because you love to give. Because you love the feeling of feeling useful. We all need to feel useful, by the way. Huh? When you're not useful in your life, there is something missing. Most people, when they retire, they die. It's true. Honestly, never retire. That's my advice to everyone. Retire, as my master would say, retire. Do something else more meaningful as you get older, something more meaningful to the spirit, because the next step is goodbye, out of here, into a box, either cremated or buried. That's the next step. So do something that's more spiritually useful as you get older, but be useful always. And people go to me many times as they get older, when they retire, I don't know what to do with my life. I said, be inventive. Know your personality. Are you good at writing? Do you like reading? If you like reading, write small articles to start with. Go to the magazine, go places, give information. You know, share what you know, make, you know, make it fun. If you wanna help people, go into the hospital. Ask if they need help. There's so many people alone here on the coast that when they, Sit, then they come out of operation, there's nobody to look after them. All they need is one visitor, and they'll change their day. That's so easy to do. I wish, I used to do it in Gibraltar because I live very close to the hospital, and visit all strangers, and they used to look forward to seeing me. Now I'm just too busy, I don't have much time to do that anymore. But it was so fulfilling. You know, every time I had 10 minutes, 15 minutes lunch break, because Gibraltar, everything is so close, I'd work from my, walk from my working place to the hospital. I got to know people, you know? Then I belonged to the League of Hospital Friends to do more, to bring magazines around. 
And I saw there were so many lonely people. So you can always do something. There's always something we can do. Get involved in the green movement. Get involved in animal charities. Mary does that a lot, right? There's always something you can do. Cheer up a lonely soul. How many lonely people on this coast? Call them out. Are you alone? Come on, let's go for a coffee. Chat. You can make people feel alive. There's always something to do. So feeling useful is really important to moving into stillness because as our master said, there's three things you need. Three things you need to be at peace. One is to be easeful. The body should not be with disease. As you know, when the body is not so well, you feel sluggish, you get a little down, depressed, you feel tired. So you need to look after your body. Exercise, if you don't like Hatha yoga, there are hundreds of other exercises. Somebody said to me, oh Nelne, I love swimming. Swim, go into an indoor, swim every day. It's gonna make you feel great. If you can't do one thing, do another thing. But never stop moving. The moment you stop moving, the body starts to degenerate much quicker, right? So keep moving, keep the body moving. Keep it easeful, look after it, do some breathing, feed it good food, look after your machine well, it's really important, it's your instrument. Second thing, uh, easeful, peaceful. Peaceful, you need to be peaceful. If you're not peaceful, you won't make the right decisions. Your life will be hell. Anybody know the feeling of hell on earth? <laughs> I did before I started yoga. My life was hell on earth. I had everything, but I had nothing. You all know that feeling. You have everything, but you have nothing. You don't even feel comfortable with you, and that's really horrible. And this is why I love this path so much, because the one thing I felt, even after two years of practice, was I'm home in here. I'm home in here. I'm home. I'm finally comfortable with who I am. I'm finally comfortable in this body and in this mind. And it was working really hard the two years to first of all keep this mind quite clean. Clean. What does clean mean? Neutrality. Pure. Blessed are the pure, they shall see God. What is purity? Being in neutrality. But in order to get into neutrality, which is stillness, you first have to sway the negative into the positive. So there's a lovely Buddha story, and I'd love you all to do this exercise at home. It's a really simple exercise, and it only requires 10 minutes of your time every morning, all right? You sit down to try and meditate. Now before you start, all the thoughts will keep coming to your head. I want you to have two bowls and collect some dark stones or get black pieces of paper and cut them and collect some white stones or get or cut white pieces of paper and put them on your side. Watch your thoughts. For every black thought, which is anger, fear, jealous, all the negatives that make you feel a bit yucky inside, fill the black, the bowl up. For every beautiful thought, creative thought, I want to create a better world, or even the mantra, loka somasta sukhinu bhavantu, may the entire universe be filled with peace and joy, love and life, but really mean it, really mean it, really imagine the universe, imagine everybody around you, happy, laughing, see it, make you feel really good. You're wishing people well, but you're wishing yourself well at the same time. Put the white one. Do this for 21 days. Watch in the beginning, the negative thoughts will be much more. But as you get control and you start to see the two different bowls working side by side, once you can see what's happening there, that you're able to watch your thoughts, then the reconditioning of your mind will start. Then you are conditioning your mind. Ah, you see there's two little white ones, that's why my life is miserable, because as you think, as you think, you become. So you know why your day has been bad? 
because it's been filled with fear. What if this should happen? What if I should get sick? What if? All negatives. And that's why your life is negative, because you attract that. And positive is just the opposite. I am peaceful. I am easeful. Say it enough and you will be. <laughs> look at the flowers. I mean, just look out there. I mean, just really just look out there. Look at the colors that we are given. They're so pretty. I mean, wow. How can anybody mis be miserable when we're looking at these colors every day? Have we forgotten how to look? Have we forgotten how to just be still and sit down and say, or just turn our eyes and say, wow, maybe there's Brexit and maybe there's all these problems. Maybe UK is going down the drain. But boy, do I live in a beautiful garden. <laughs> and you know, the way of the world will be the way of the world. This will happen. There'll be good times. There'll be bad times. It's a cycle. We've seen it throughout history. It's evolution. It's going to happen. You know, there's one generation after another generation and another generation. But you yourself as a soul, each one individually can go beyond that. We can't control the world, but we can control our minds. And if each one of us can become lights in the world, little glowing lights, we don't have to do much more than that. Because a glowing light, a peaceful person will attract a lot of energy around them. And just by being in the company of the peaceful person, you will be elevated. So all we have to do is make ourselves peaceful. That's all we have to do. And when we do just that, we become supportive to our world. We become more useful to our world. We are no use to our world when our minds are going all over the place. And watch when people serve with love, you know, you know, people, I don't want to work, I'm tired. No, work is essential on this path. It is essential. So you feel useful, right? You feel peaceful and you feel easeful. You're moving the body and then the mind can be still. Because now that you've looked after your body, your mind, your spirit and service, it's a sense of when you touch the pillow at night, oh, you're sleeping, you're too exhausted to think nonsense. So when you get up the next morning, there's like, what can I do today to make my world better? You don't even have to think that. It will come. Because now we're being used by this tremendous force of the universe because our minds are quite neutral. So we can be used as instruments to serve others. You know, I never know, you know, from week to week, day to day, what's going to happen. It's quite exciting. Hmm? I get cancellations one moment, and the next moment she will call me and say, oh, somebody's desperate to see you. I said, you see, the plan is perfect. Never worry about cancellations. Somebody else needed it more. You know, the plan is just perfect. You know, she goes, don't you get annoyed? You book four weeks in advance, you're in the office, and people cancel last week. I said, no, because there's always a perfect plan. You see, don't get attached to anything. You see, no, there must be a reason for it. And if there's nobody else that needs the appointment, oh my goodness, I'm really happy to have one hour. <laughs> so happy just to sit and do nothing. I love being bored. <laughs> there's no chance of it. <laughs> so this is moving into stillness. So, what can we do? So know these principles. Peaceful, can you all say peaceful, easeful, useful. Those three things. And watch your life. What is missing? What is missing? And you'll get your, quite, your answer right there. So useful is miss, missing? Do more. Peaceful is missing? Read more books on spiritual books. Start to know who you are. Start get to get in touch with your spirit more. Hmm? Like I said, the next step is out the door, out of this world. You're going to be back into soul and spirit. So let's sort our emotional and soul self while we're here. And look after our bodies. Look after our bodies. Because if your body should fall flat on you, and we never know tomorrow when the next accident may happen, and you might be, you know, today I was speaking to somebody who was disabled, and, you know, it just knocked that person off, you know, his center. Because, you know, once you're disabled, you know, everything you thought you were, you no longer are. So it's very easy to get into depression. 
But if you understand that it's all thoughts, <laughs> and it doesn't matter whether you're disabled or not, you can be a great example in a great light. It's only that you think, I am no longer useful because I'm disabled now. But so long as you have this, so long as you have this, you can do anything. So prepare your mind so if you should fall sick when you're older, or if you should have a problem, at least you have your mind to guide you with this spiritual knowledge. You know, and I love being sick at the times I've been sick in my life and I've been really sick in my deathbed nearly four times. Do you know the wonderful thing is while I was lying down in bed with so much pain, I could just meditate. And I knew it was the best thing for me. It was my medicine, really. <laughs> Meditation was my medication. And I really quickly got out of hospital each time. Doctor would say 10 days, 15 days, five days. Doctor, look at me, I look so well. Don't you think I'm well? <laughs> Let me go home. Because <laughs> that's when I'm really going to heal, you know? And, okay, Nelanie, but you promised me this. This is, yeah, yeah, just let me go home. Just let me get back to work. So let me get back to work. If I'm working, I will heal fast. And I could easily write a poem or two. You know, Shanti's always asking me for my next book. When is your next book coming out? I can do some, some work in that direction. So, you know, you always think everything is for the best. That keeps your mind peaceful. There's nothing punishing in us. Please remember that. Peaceful, peaceful, useful, nothing punishing you. Life is about ups and downs. Deal with it. I'm going through a down period. Okay. I am. Accept it. Truthful. How can I lift myself up? Be around positive people. <laughs> Friendliness towards the happy, Sri Patanjali tells us, get yourself out there and ask for help. If you can't do it yourself, ask for help. It's an intelligent person who knows when to ask for help. When my mind was in such a mess, I called my master, ask for help. And then he gave me the Yoga Sutras of Sri Patanjali and that set me on my feet. So, that helps you, you to move into stillness. Now, once you know that, then there are ways that you can really help yourself through meditation, through Hatha Yoga. You do a Hatha Yoga class. At the end of the class, you've got deep relaxation. Then you've got the breathing. That will help you into stillness. You can do Tai Chi as well. Any of you done, done Tai Chi in your life? Well, you should try it. It's quite incredible. It's, uh, we're going to do some work now just to move us into stillness a little, using our bodies to help us. Because not everybody finds it easy to just sit down and meditate. So sometimes we need the help of the body. We keep the body quiet and then the mind follows suit. And the breath quiet and the mind follows suit. So I'm going to ask you all, if you don't mind, to please stand up. So we're going to go do a little few exercises just to make us feel the energy, that we are energy. We are much more than we think. We are most powerful when we are quiet. So please, bring your hands out like this. Start to feel the tingling on your hands. Do you feel it? And if you don't, don't worry. Just start to close your eyes. Turn over your hands, turn over your palms. And very slowly bring the hands down towards your knees. A Tai Chi movement, gently bending the knees, gently. And just bring the hands down towards the knees. Feel the energy race through your arms. Standing up with the palms facing down, 
started to straighten your knees, standing up, bringing up the hands to the original position. And now bring your hands together like this. You can open your hands. You can open your eyes, sorry. <laughs> and just stare at that space in front of you. Stare. Feel a little, you might feel a little dizzy. And now I want you to bring your hands close together. Close your eyes as you bring them in together. And before they touch, feel the energy. Then hands in prayer position. Thumbs towards your heart. Focus on your heart area. Wear a smile on your lips. Take a deep breath. And exhale, let go. Bring your hands down to the sides of your body. Closing your eyes, palms facing forward, and just stand. Allow the body to move where it will, don't hold back. back into prayer position very slowly, very slowly. Bring thumbs back to your heart. Bring your arms down again. Bring your feet together. Bring up your shoulders towards your ears and then bring the shoulders back and down. Inhale and exhale. Just listen. Just listen. Do nothing more but listen.
So while you're doing that, how do you feel? Not good? Not bad? Just still. In that stillness, how much energy came from you? Did you feel your hands? Did you feel the tingling? So this is why the yogis tell us in stillness, we recharge our bodies and our minds. While the mind is going on all the time, there is no stillness, you cannot recharge. This is why there is so much depression today. This is why so many people suffer from panic attacks today. Because <coughs> there's no charging our spirit. You could feel the energy in your own body. We call it Kundalini energy. Chi, prana. And this is so healing for us. And this is the space Susan was talking about, the space in between the thoughts. We can have control of that if we practice daily with a clear mind, a mind without judgments about what is wrong, what is right. No, none of that. Just a clear mind. And a clear mind can only come from a sincere desire to want to be a good person in this life, to be honest, to be truthful. It cannot come from any other place. Any other thought is going to drive you nuts. And once, you know, when you work on this path, when the, there's less of the black stones and very many of the white stones, you will find that it's easier and easier to be in stillness. And stilling is, stillness is a very healing time. In the Psalms it says, be still and know that I am God. You were so still, so what was moving in your body? There was a lot going on. Now this kind of energy can heal, can heal just by being where it is. Children are very sensitive to this energy. So are animals. You all know, when you go home, you can pretend to a child, but if you're in a bad mood and say, yes, I'm okay, they can sense it, they know, and they'll react to you. So when many parents come and see me and say, oh, my child is you know, talking back to me, and I said, that's because you're so stressed when you come home. And the child's fighting against that stress, you know, but they won't say, mom, dad, you're stressed, can you be a little peaceful, please? Because <laughs> that's all they want, that feeling of peace when they, enter a home, that you are peaceful. You can say all you want about finding peace, but you are not peaceful and still, they will feel it. Everybody around you will feel it. So the job of a yogi is to move into stillness constantly. And we can only do that, we constantly remind ourselves who we are, who we are, but it's constant. And this work is every day. You can't stop one day and go the next day. You can say, oh, I did a really good you know, week of meditation this week. I'm not going to do it tomorrow. No, it doesn't work like that. It's like brushing your teeth. You stop one day, you'll smell. <laughs> Got to brush your teeth every day and twice a day. You know. So it's the same thing. You have to look after your spirit every day. Every day. In fact, the goal is every moment. And that's when you move into stillness during your whole day. So when things go wrong, it's not that you're not going to get agitated or fearful sometimes, but you're able to control that fear and you're able to control that ag agitation, not by suppressing it, which is the worst thing of all, or repressing it, which is the worst thing of all, but actually dealing with it with love. 
Okay, I'm agitated. I know that if I go on and on about it, I'm going to go into this movie theater. So I'm going to love myself and I'm going to take some time off and I'm going to forgive myself and I'm going to think of words of peace to make myself happy. Turn on a nice song. For me, music always works. I don't know about you. I know me songs work, you know? So I'll turn on a nice song. <laughs> the other day I went to see a very good friend of mine, Patty, who was really ill in the hospital. And she was so low. And whenever she came to the yoga center, she always sang that song um, from the sound of music. Um, you know when they, Raindrops on me, yes, is the da da. You know, the, can you sing it for us? Like? <laughs> <laughs> These are a few of my favorite things. When the dog barks, when the bee stings, when I'm feeling sad, I simply remember my favorite things, and then I don't feel so bad. It's really true. So, you know, she was really down. I went to see her in intensive care. She said, I'm really down. So I thought, I could lift her. I tried to lift her. Didn't work. Do your mantra. Didn't work. So, oh, Patty, you know, you always sing that song for us from the sound of music, this particular song. What was it? And she burst out singing and she remembered all the words. And I said, Who says you got dementia? You don't. <laughs> you remembered all the words. I didn't. You know? And then she smiled, and then that lift, and then the joy, the spark came back to her eyes. And I thought, whoa. Do you know, it doesn't have to be a certain way. It doesn't only have to be about mantras. It doesn't only have to be a certain way. Know yourself well. Know what lifts you. Everything is divine. We say God is everywhere. God is in everything. So everything is divine. So long as your method doesn't hurt anyone and benefit someone, especially use, use it. There's no rights and wrong in this spirit game. The rights and wrong come from men who want to control us, come from religions, come from different people who want to control, control, control. Politics, everything wants to control us. But one thing they cannot control is this. If we are free here, nobody can keep us prisoners. Who keeps us our prisoners? It's our desires, it's our own mind, it's the stuff that we desire. I want, I want, I want, but everything you want is already inside of you. And the yoga science is to move into that stillness, to move into that part of you that has everything it needs already, which is the peace. So search for that peace first and then everything will work itself out. Everything will work itself out. We really are temporary on this world. You know the mantra that we chant? Asatoma, sadgamaya, tamasoma, jyotir gamaya, mrityoma, amritam gamaya. What does it mean? It's an age old, 4,000 year old mantra. Lead us from unreal to real. What is unreal? All this one day will be gone. And not so long. Oh, I'm 62. I could be dead in two years. I don't know. I could be here, here for 20 years. I really don't know. But one thing I know, this world is an illusion because it will be gone. You know, the other day I was sitting in my meditation room and I was laughing. What a pretty meditation room. One day you'll belong to somebody else. It's quite funny. I said, but I can enjoy the beauty now. And what am I meditating for? The joy of this moment, it's all an illusion because I am it. I am the wind, I am the sound, I am the trees, I am the flowers. Because when I go, I'll become part of all of it. I'm going to disintegrate into space. This body is no longer going to be here. But only if I think, because as you think, it becomes. It becomes. So you train your mind to find this peace, to find this stillness. Nothing is forever. Everything passes. So when you go through a bad time, this too shall pass. Oh, I love that statement from the Bible. It helped me through many bad times in my life. And this too shall pass. Okay, what will it be? Three months of suffering? One year of suffering? I can do one year. It'll go. It'll pass. It'll get better. Everything gets better. I can do it. I can do it. I just have to accept 
the pain. I just have to accept pain. Pain is normal. Who doesn't go through pain? So find peace in the pain. Find tools. Look for tools to help yourself. Hmm? Don't allow the pain to swallow you. This is the yogi's path. Ride the waves. This is what we're doing with all these practices. Riding the waves rather than drowning. Hmm? This is stillness. When you spend more time in stillness, there is a, because you're spending more time with this energy, this dynamic energy that you felt, it will help you. It will help you to control the mind because you will love the stillness and you don't want the mess in your mind anymore. You just don't. You start to see things so differently. You know, just imagine a black cloth. If you imagine, but this is before you practice understanding the, the mind stuff. And you pour some coffee on a black cloth. You won't see it, but you're living in a black cloth. It's all black, black, black. It's darkness. As you start to clean your mind up, you put a white cloth down. You drop one spot of coffee. You notice right away. Right away. You will notice. And then you say, I don't like this thought in my mind because it's a black spot on your white mind. <laughs> and you want to, the, what you want to do is you want to heal it immediately. And you, that is our power. That is the only independence that we have. We cannot change our karma. The only time we have some control is when one thought becomes an action. We can change that process of that thought and that action in that split second. That's the only thing we can do. And all this knowledge is to do that so that we change those thoughts into stillness. What is your goal? Keep asking yourself. For me, I wanted to know if there was a God. Hmm? I know there is a dynamic energy. Oh my God, it is so dynamically loving. That's what I've learned. All the unloving stuff comes from this world, which is an illusion. Lead us from unreal to real. Because when you're dead, this is no longer real, is it? <laughs> this will all be gone. You won't even be here to enjoy any of it. So lead us from unreal to real. Lead us from darkness to the light. Darkness is where? Here. Nowhere else to look. You cannot change anybody. You can only change yourself. People will change themselves when they are ready. Hmm? You've all tried it. You've all tried changing people. And I found the best way, if you want people to change, the only control you have is changing yourself. When you become more peaceful, they have no choice. <laughs> Follow you. <laughs> Otherwise, they'll be left out. Because they'll see something in you that is so different. And they'll want it. They'll want it. Even though they resist, they'll still want it. Because they sense that sense of peace. So become lights in your life. Move into stillness more. Less talking. Less proving a point. Less I'm right and you're wrong. Less of all of that. I am better than you or you are better than me. Less of comparisons. No comparisons. Cut down on the comparisons in your life. Just move into stillness. When there is something you can't deal with, it's too hard for you. Just move into the stillness. Just imagine yourself doing this with your hands. Breathing out. And remember the energy that you felt. The stillness, the joy, the peace. And move into that stillness. This is what stillness is all about. And this will help you with all the frustrations of your mind. Just constantly remembering, I'm coming back to my place of peace. I'm coming back to my place of joy. And this is the work we need to do with yoga. This is the work we need to do with our minds. You see how easily stillness is distracted. Sorry. No, it's okay. We're just talking about stillness, so you're a good example. 
they suddenly all went that way <laughs> and lost their stillness and lost their concentration and lost whatever I was saying and I could have been speaking to the walls. <laughs> so it was a really good example. This is what happens. See how distraction happens so quickly. So thank you for that. It's all for the best. It just shows how quick the mind can be distracted. That's why the practice, constant practice, so that the mind is not bullied into quick distraction. We want immediately what's going on, what's here, what's there. That's the mind. It's always looking to do, to do, to do, to do this. If you are in stillness, when the force or the power needs you, it will use you. You don't have to ask. You know, my master used to give the example of a tool cupboard. He said, you know, go to a tool cupboard. They all sit there nicely there. They don't say, use me, use me, use me when you need it. They'll use, if you need a hammer to put a nail into the wall, you pick up the hammer and the nail. When you need uh, pliers, you pick up the pliers. So when we are needed, needed, each one of us are. Otherwise, we would not be alive in this body. We weren't. We just wouldn't be. Whatever is not useful by the law of nature will be discarded. It will be discarded. So while you are still alive, it means you have something to do, either on a very personal basis for your own spiritual development, or because you have a mission here for the world to serve much more. I don't know. You have to find that out. And in order to find that out, you need to be still. So the secret of moving into stillness is try to maintain that quiet, it's easy to do in the good times. It's almost impossible to do in the bad times. And that's when you need it most. And that's when people stop meditating or listening to talks or, or stop working on themselves. That's when you need it most, when you're agitated. That's when you need to work on yourself. And as you, when you're agitated, say, I really can't meditate today, and make a point of just sitting down for 10 minutes. Because then you're fighting the force of the mind. It says, I can't do it. I'm depressed. I'm this. No, I can. Even if it's for five minutes, I can do it. And you do it for five minutes. You may not be meditating, but you've taken control of the mind. And this is what I use with uh, people who are depressed. They don't want to get up in the morning. They never want to get up in the morning. So I said, this is very normal. You never want that. And if you allow this to happen, it goes to a full-fledged depression. And then it's almost possible to get you up. That point, I want you to stick all kinds of <laughs> lovely sayings by the, your bed, your bed, before you go to bed at night, read all these beautiful sayings in the morning, as soon as you open your eyes, you know, oh, it's wonderful to be alive, you're not going to feel it, but read it, read a beautiful prayer that uplifts you, Re have a lovely short story that uplifts you just by your bed. And then the first thing you do, water, go and have a shower. Go and have a shower. The moment you get up and that water goes through your body, you're already 25% better. Get dressed. Get dressed. And then move. Move. Walk slowly. Walk slowly. And then move a little faster. Move a little faster. And then you start to lift yourself. It's quite easy, you know, when people practice this technique. Really, I see in even two or three days, they are better. <laughs> really much better. And then they have to continue. They have to continue. The secret of getting into stillness is never get out of it. Sri Patanjali tells us, you know, in order to still the mind, you have to practice for a long time. And the most important one here, without a break, yes. Without a break. And with all your heart. You've got to want to do it for you. What else is there? You have to ask yourself that, self, that question constantly. You have to be the jnana yogi, the one that inquires, who am I, who am I, who am I, who am I? Lead us from unreal to real. Lead us from darkness to the light. Lead us from the fear of death to the knowledge of immortality. Because if we know that we are immortal, that this life is only temporary. We don't know what planet we're going to go to next. I don't think there are so many hells and heavens. I guess it's, there's different planets to house the mind stuff. 
So if your mind stuff is bad, you go to the planet of the evil. If your mind stuff is good, you go to the planet of the good. And if you're free from all the mind stuff, you go to the one eternal light. Simple as you think, it becomes. So it's really important how you feel at the moment of death. So the whole spiritual practice is to prepare yourself for the next great event of your life. And it's a great event. And the only way you can prepare yourself is reminding yourself to be in that stillness. And stop the judgment, stop the noise. When the noise happens, you can watch it. You don't have to be part of it. Understood? You don't have to be part of it. Many people have said, oh, no, they had a bad thought. I said, did you do anything about the bad thought? No, I didn't. You know, I thought this person, I really wanted so angry at this person. I wanted that person, you know, to, to come through some harm. And that's really evil, don't you think? And I go, yes, it's pretty evil, but did you do anything about it? No, I didn't. I stopped it at that point. So forgive yourself. Now you know whenever you want to do something evil, how it makes you feel. Forgive yourself and just don't do it next time. Do you see? It's all a learning. It's not about judgment. You don't have to hold it in your mind. Okay, you thought that yesterday. Look how nice you are today. You're sorry about that thought already. Now you're an angel. <laughs> so I've forgotten you were that evil person. Yes, it was evil, but it's done and finished and dusted. Do you see what I'm saying? You've got to let things go all the time, all the time. This is the practice. Let the past go. Start with the present. Now, this moment, be still and know that I am God. Be still. Be still. Learn to be quiet. 